So now what we are going to do is we are going to basically look at a centrifugal pump simulation. So what do you think is happening here? This is obviously a simulation. So this is what you call as a CFD simulation. I hope people know what CFD stands for. CFD stands for computational fluid dynamics. It's a technique that allows you to simulate fluids using a computer. All right. So here we are simulating flow through a centrifugal pump. So what are some of the things that you are able to observe? What are the some what are some of the things that you are able to observe from these this, this simulation? How the fluid is moving? So we are able to see how the fluid is moving. That's correct. That's a very good observation. The, these colors represent your velocity. So blue color represents low velocity, whereas red color or red and green, rep, green represents intermediary values of velocity and red represents high value of velocity. Couple of things that you need to think about here is you are actually doing something called as a transient simulation. So this is the most accurate way of actually running a CFD analysis. Right. So this is a transient simulation. And how am I saying that this is a transient sim simulation? Well, my impeller is moving. So for example, here, if I actually play the video one more time, you can see that the impeller is moving, right? Well, as the impeller is moving, the computational mesh is also being recreated. So here we are actually showing the computational mesh, right? So this thing that you have, like maybe I'll use a different color, maybe red color. So this thing that you have, this cross lines, this is what you call as a computational mesh. Guys who are part of our CFD course will know this. So a computational mesh is basically, um, these are tiny pieces. So these are, you can think of this as like a puzzle, right? Where your entire geometry is made up of these tiny, tiny block or tiny, tiny boxes. Now inside these boxes, like a jigsaw puzzle. So inside these boxes, you solve your fluid equations and only then you're able to simulate it. Now, the reason why it's called as transient is because your impeller is actually rotating. And that is a very, very hard problem because when your impeller is rotating, you need to create a computational mesh again, and you need to do it accurately because when you create the computational mesh, you need to transfer the data from the previous mesh to the previous mesh to the current mesh, right? That mapping strategies can cause a lot of errors. So those are areas in which people focus a lot. What is the alternate option? The alternate option is people use something called as MRF. So in most of the cases, people use a technique called MRF where the impeller is not at all rotating. The impeller is stationary. But what we do is we actually create a zone around the impeller. So I'm trying my best to draw a circle here. And inside the zone, what you do is you do not rotate the impeller. But in all of these computational cells that I'm marking that are actually inside this particular zone, I add an additional term, which, which basically captures the effect of velocity, right? So basically I say that, you know, I, I add an additional source term to be specific in the momentum equation so that it can actually capture the rotation. So this is an approximate way of, uh, <clears throat> this is an approximate of approximate way of simulating flow through a centrifugal pump, uh, MRF. MRF stands for moving reference frame. Okay. So basically what you're doing is you have two reference frames in this case, one reference frame is in the pump in the impeller, right? So if you have a reference frame in the impeller, the impeller is always going to be stationary with respect to the reference frame. And outside of this reference frame, you have your global reference frame where your impeller is supposed to rotate. But what you basically do is you add a source term so that you kind of uh, capture the effect of rotation without actually rotating uh, the impeller. All right. <laughs> so if you ever get a chance to simulate pumps, if you're using MRF, remember that that's an approximate technique that will give you good answers for performance curve. Meaning what people would do is they would take a setup like this. <coughs> they would vary the boundary conditions. What is the boundary conditions? Well, I would say that, okay, my uh, outlet pressure is P2, which is basically my delivery pressure, my inlet pressure is specified at the eye of the impeller, which is P1. These are the boundary conditions that I provide. And then the code, the computational code will be able to simulate the M dot, the mass flow rate. And I can do this process again and again for different Delta P's and I'll get my performance curve, right? So this is called as virtual testing. And with virtual testing, you can get performance curves up to within 5% accuracy, which is a pretty neat deal because 
if you're actually doing uh, pump performance curve using experiments you need a lot of uh, you need a lot of equipment right you need a lot of equipment you need a lab for it but if you don't have such a lab you can just use a computational tool and you can run these simulations Thank you.